Hi, it's Pat Gillis here, and a little while ago some students were asking, what does a bowed tendon mean? And I thought, well, the easiest way to do is to show you a bowed tendon. So this is our little horse, Holly. Um, we got Holly a number of years back. I think she's kind of had a rough start in life, but she definitely has a bowed tendon. And so I thought I would show you that, and you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So the easiest way, I think, to recognize a bowed tendon is to look at a good one first, right? So you can see the difference. So I'm going to show you Holly's good leg first. So that's this one here. And if you look, you'll see that from the knee down, that tendon, the, the superficial flexor tendon, it's quite tight and it's a nice straight line down the back, okay? And if you run your hands down here, it feels equal width all the way down, okay? So the superficial flexor tendon lies here and the deep digital tendon deep digital flexor tendon runs just below that, okay? So there's actually two tendons sort of sitting on top of each other, but the one that's affected by the bow tendon is the superficial flexor tendon. But you'll see here it's really nice and tight and it's really nice and flat and straight. So now we'll have a look at that, the bowed tendon. On the, on the good tendon, you know, the tendon itself, it was tight and it kind of had this sort of an appearance to it. It was really straight down the back of the horse's leg, right? Um, when we look at the one that's bowed, what you're going to look for on that back of the tendon, it's going to be more this kind of a shape. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's the idea. It's going to bow in that way. Uh, if you look here, you'll notice this, that, that shape I'm talking about, it kind of comes this way, right? So instead of it being nice and flat like it was on the good leg, we've now got a swelling through here. This is what we call a cold bow. Like she's sound on this leg now, but the site of injury was probably somewhere around here because that's where the thickest part of the tendon is, it's right here. So at some point um, she tore fiber in that tendon. There's sort of an inflammation like this and she's just left with this scar tissue like this. You know, so it's cold now. It would have been really hot at one point. Would have required probably stall rest and a lot of cold hosing and things to kind of get the heat out of that. Like she's quite sound on this leg. Um, like we've never had any problems with it. But you know, when people ask me, would you buy a horse like this if you were, like why would you buy a horse like this? Um, Certainly if I was looking at a horse as a competitive show jumper or a three-day event horse or some horse that's really going to take a little bit of pounding on those front legs, I probably wouldn't risk buying a horse like this because that's always going to be a weakness in a horse and uh, again for what we do here she's fine, we're never going to work her that hard, but you know if I was looking for a competitive animal I probably wouldn't take a chance on a horse with a bowed tendon like that. Cold doesn't matter to me, that's going to always be a site of weakness. Okay. So <laughs> you know when I showed the kids a bowed tendon somebody intelligently asked, well, why would you buy a horse like this? And that's a really good question because that's not the only injury poor Holly had. We think she probably had a pretty rough start in life. Um, she was owned by some Mennonite people and she was rescued by a lady who then sold her to us. Um, and when we first got her, oh my gosh, she was so... Um, the very first day we got her, there was sort of a, a blankness to her eyes. Like she looked, I don't know if you've ever heard that expression of learned helplessness, where, where an animal just sort of feels like there's no point in uh, kind of worrying about anything more. They just give up, you know, and trying to look after themselves. That's how she felt to me when we first got her. So, you know, if you look back here, here's another really nasty injury this poor little horse had at some point. She must have had a pretty nasty crash um, of some kind. So this leg is diagonal to that bowed tendon. And it's pretty nasty. Like, it's all healed up. And again, fortunately, we don't have any soundness issues with this little horse. But, you know, that's a pretty pretty severe injury at some point. It obviously never healed very well either. I don't know how they cared for it. And the other thing that, you know, you'll notice when you look at a little horse like this is that this white hair that she's got. Um, you know, usually that's a sign of, of poor fitting tack. She's got it on the other side too. So it was likely a harness or something. As far as we understand, this horse was driven and not ridden. Um, and so I guess this was a harness that didn't fit her very well. So, you know, she really uh, came to us as a kind of a sad little horse, really, you know. But there was something that was so kind about her. Just the way she, you know, she was just such a kind little horse that we thought we would take a chance on her. Um, and it didn't take her long. Once she started, figured out that she could trust people here, oh my god, her personality just came out. And she's just a lovely, lovely little horse. So it still, it still doesn't answer the question of why would I buy Holly? Because there's an awful lot going wrong with this horse. But again, as I say, there was something about this little horse that, just something about her kind little eye. And I kind of couldn't leave her behind that day when we went to look at her. 
But about a month or so ago, I was out in the field and I was videotaping and I had my tripod out there. And I asked one of the girls who works here just to let the horses out one at a time. And then I would sort of film them as they came out of the barn. <laughs> and every, every time they came out of the barn, they would see a tripod and a human being behind it. And they'd all have a heart attack and they'd run around and be goofy or be afri afraid of it or whatever. And um, every horse that came out was a little less demonstrative because they would see their peers were still alive. So it must be okay. But they were all really intensely interested and in kind of trying to stay clear of this human being out there with a tripod, even though they've known me for how many years right and then Holly came out and when you see what Holly does in the video I guess it doesn't answer the question it doesn't answer the question of why I bought her but it does make me happy I do. Hi Holly. <laughs> well I don't need you to come and knock the camera over so it's okay. Hi how are you? You are so funny. <laughs> how are you doing? Anyway that's my Holly story that she can be so trusting after everything she's been through just amazes me. If you're watching this anywhere besides at our blog, which is at ismyhorsehappy.com, go on over there, scroll down, leave a message. Let me know if you've ever gotten a horse maybe against your better judgment and been so glad you did. I'll talk to you next week and remember to thank your horse.